Hello again everyone, I like the rally cars. So we have a relatively new one here by Shuko and Tarmac Works. I'm quite positive the casting is made by Shuko and then for some reason Tarmac Works always does these collaborations uh, because I guess they're too lazy to make all their own castings. <laughs> right? It's, it's strange. But I will give them credit, the collaborations they do, they've, they've gotten me twice now with the, uh, the BMW 2002 rally car and now this guy. For me, if I always have a choice, I probably would gravitate towards getting a, a rally car over just a plain Volkswagen Golf, but maybe I'm wrong. Historically, this blister will not fit this. Look at this. So it's literally taller. So I think if you took some scissors to it, though, you, you could make this work. And see, it's still taller here. So it's it's really weird, you know. The thing that bothers me is you're just making me buy this, right? You're forcing people to waste money on stuff that doesn't work. That is called poor product design. All right, but enough about that. Let's get into this model here. I actually did find images of the number 32 car. Now this is the Marlboro cigarette sponsored vehicle and this silliness here in uh, you know, some scale model companies is they're censoring that tobacco sponsorship. So really it's just a car with a, a triangle on it now. But the license plate does match up. It's got the crazy uh, fog lights there, so that looks good. Yeah, look at that. Most of the graphics do match, so that's, that looks pretty nice. The rear end's obviously better than the front end now. Although it's still missing Marlboro there. <clears throat> yeah, so anyhow, it's, it's definitely form factor wise, it looks pretty good. Just graphic wise, yeah, it seems it looks obviously a little bit plain. Now, naturally, it would have been nice if they just added some decals. Uh, some other brands do do that as well, but I guess they just don't like cigarettes. Okay, well, anyways, we have the stamp steel wheels, and they look accurate to the real car as well, this type of wheel, so that's nice. There's a little black in the middle of them, with some detail looking like lug nuts and stuff, some hollowing holes. There's no air passing between, but they're such small holes, uh, it seems okay for me. Uh, the tampo printing here is nice, so that is a nice thing about this brand. This isn't running decals, although I will say there's something weird here. I don't know if there's some hair or something. We'll see about the driver's names, how legible those may be. <clears throat> well, it's a curse, cursive script, obviously, so it's a little hard to make out. And uh, there's an A here, because I guess this car was developed, or it was running in... Well, no, never mind. That's probably the blood type. Never mind. All right, so I'll talk about the car a little bit now. This is a Mark I GTI, and told from the internet, it's got a 1.8 liter inline four up here. And it, this was racing in the Group 2 category. And this was for the 1980 Monte Carlo race, which would have been in a place 36th, uh, according to the internet. So, uh, Also, this, I'm told this is supposed to be turbocharged. And then making around 170 horsepower, between 170 and 240. I think it had two different sources talking about this. So, you know, with turbo, you can just up the boost and reduce reliability so power can be you know changed and then it's running on 13 to 14 inch wheels obviously you know gravel versus snow versus dirt they're going to run different types of wheels for durability and lightness that compromise okay so that's why you learned about the car hopefully i'm correct probably not it's the internet uh this looks like a golf ball this is some of the pretty bad orange peel i think i mean it literally actually does look like an orange peel. So that's that is too bad. Yeah yeah, it's masked a little better here because the white is hiding it. Alright. Alright, let's get to the front end here, which is what I find appealing of rally cars. I mean this looks like a weird insect, you know, it looks like a spider. The Volkswagen badge is really nice though, very crisp. The license plate looks fantastic. Uh six plastic lights up here look fantastic. And there's a little red in here, you know, the red GTI trim around that grill. So they managed to get that, even though it's, it's, I see. I think I see. I think maybe there's a normal grill, and then these four big lights are glued onto it. 
That's the only way I could see them getting that red line across most of that. The little reflectors or turn signals are uh, orange, obviously, but all I'm trying to decipher is if they're painted or if that's a sticker. That is paint from what I can see. You can also see a little rivet or something keeping the bumper on. Some little sponsorship down in here. Um, hold on here. I guess, is that a decal? You know, it's so shiny, that is a decal. So, and just, yep, there, look at that. So this is why I don't like decals. You know, I complain about it in every video, but this is why. Look at that, that's not cool. That's, that's gonna fall off, unless I go in with a paintbrush and put some glue underneath that. So, that is not good. Alright, you will see that the headlights are cloudy because this is the vapor from the crazy glue that they use to mount this stuff. So, you know, if you've used crazy glue, that's just what happens. It outgasses and it, it crazes uh, plastics. A little extra plastic from the molding process there. Alright, so on the side, boy, see now this looks like a tampo. It feels like a tampo. Yeah, tampo. Tampo. You'll see a little ridge here, white. I see, so I'm gonna guess this is, they painted, you know, the, the red and the white, and to make sure they have a good break, I think they literally printed a white line to cover any sort of mixing of the red and the white or fading or something. That's smart. Uh, that's pretty smart, okay. The white is covering up the casting pretty well. You don't see any of the darkness of the metal behind this white. The door handle is sticking out. It's painted black. There's a little black here on the window casting here, so that looks good. The window does have this molded in painted black. Alright, fuel filler. I think that's a bump for the fuel filler, but it's covered up. Okay, nice clear lenses here in the tail as well, so that's great. And then, uh, you know, this is probably crazy glued on as well, this Monte Carlo thing. It's just a blanked off exhaust, but look how thin it is, so I can totally understand that. There's a raised lock mechanism with not only, you know, silver on black, so that's good. And then this and this are really clear, so that's good. But again, look at this, look at this decal. That thing is not laid on straight. So, alright, so, but now again, this looks like it's an actual tampo print because you don't have any of the clear plastic around it. Hmm, it's a weird mix of tampos and decals. I guess it's better to have some tampos than all decals, so thank you, Shuko, there. Um, hmm, not enough red here. And then this casted in mirror, yeah, so... This is what I'm thinking now. The whole car was probably painted white first, and then they painted red on top of it, so that's why there's not enough there or here in the, the windows. Right? Yeah, so that's what happened. It's always easier to paint dark above white than white above dark, so that's logical. Now the interior, well, it's just a black interior. Boy, that is really dark in there too. Let me get a flashlight, see what we can find. Alright, left hand drive, standard details, you know, they're pretty good, nothing to complain about. This one has a roll cage here in the back, but I'm trying to see how far it goes forward. Oh, it's just the rear, uh, rear half of the car roll cage. I wonder if that's accurate. No, it's not. Looking at the front photograph, this sh it should come forward. But I think this might actually be a smart thing that Shuko did, because almost all roll cages I see... They're just, you know, because there's plastic literally underneath the casting up there, you know, you can see, look at that plastic up there. So the roll cages always have to be low, and then they, they just look weird, you know, because they cover up so much of the windows, the windshield and the side windows. So I think that it's actually, although less accurate, it makes the model look nicer because you can see the seat backs and the headrests and stuff like that because it's not covered by a roll cage. But I will say to their credit, that roll cage is pretty high up there. It's not, you can see it a little bit obviously here, but I don't think you're supposed to be, see any of it like on the real car. All right, 
the wiper blades are casted in and painted black, so that's pretty good. No complaints. And then this again, that looks like a tampo print. Some ridging there, very fine. Alright, thank goodness. So Shuko on this here is screwed together, so if you want to add some color to the inside of this model, you could. Add some details. We have the brand, the scale, what the car is. The only thing I see that's missing is like when this casting was originally made, you know, some sort of date of copyright or something. Uh, the tires are okay, you know, they're not the crispest detail, they're not as good as Kyosho, but they're there, that's good, and they don't look like, you know, they're Bigfoot tires. The tread blocks are actually pretty small, which I think is accurate, so, and then the tires do have curvature to the side, and that looks accurate too for that type of uh, era. Okay, so very good. Uh, the bumpers are just cast, part of the cast metal, but, uh, I don't, eh, you know, ideally they would have been separate plastic pieces, because see here, it just isn't enough black, so it looks kind of weird, right, so, separate bumpers are always easier, because you'll always have the proper color separation, that side's better, yeah, so you can see a little bit of white there again. Well, what do you guys know, if you actually open that cardboard box, there are some decals, so I will be back. Okay, put the decals on, um, just from tips for you guys. First I used this stuff here, I used Mark Setter. This is, a uh, boy, what brand is this? Doesn't even say. Mr. Hobby, I think. And so you put that on the model, you know, while the uh, decal is soaking in water. And then uh, this helps kind of glue it down to the surface. But if you have a door crevice or something like that where you want to actually bend the decal around, you have to use some of this Mark Softer. So basically I put the decal in water, and then I coat the car with Mark Setter. Then I put the decal on that puddle of Mark Setter. I take off the excess with a Q-tip, and then I put a little bit on top of this on top of the decal, and then I gently you know, push in the uh, decal into the door crevice. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube, obviously, how to use decal uh, solutions, so you might want to just do that instead of me listening to me talk to you. Okay, well, anyways, so pleasantly, this model looks a lot better now. Just four simple Marbo decals, and now it looks the way it, it's supposed to. So I'm very grateful that Shuko added that. All right, so I'm going to pull up a couple other VWs here. This is a road racing car, and this is made by Greenlight. And it's pretty cool except for the white headlights, you know, you can just see a, a mile away that it looks weird to have these just white circles on the front where headlights should be. I think a much better brand would be Kyosho, and uh, that's Kyosho's version right there of a GTI. And yeah, just look at the headlights, right? So top view, I mean these are all Mark 1's, so it should be quite similar. So I think all three brands pretty much are around 164. I don't see any major size differences or anything like that. So yeah, any one of these brands should suit suit you okay. The this one actually does have an opening uh, hood feature if that's your your thing. Let me just show it to you guys. It's not really my thing though because to me that engine just isn't really appealing. It, it just doesn't look realistic to me, so I'd rather just have no hood. All right, let's get these out and look at a couple of the rally cars from its day. We're talking serious racer cars, though. Now, that's a purpose-built rally car, the Lancia Stratos. It was the first purpose-built rally car. And uh, the next one is a Fiat 131 Abarth, which is uh, from 1978. So both of these are part of the Fiat group, and uh, they both dominated you know, rally racing in the late 70s. Both of these models are made by an extinct brand called CMs. CM apostrophe S. Yeah, if you want these things, you gotta go on eBay, but they're not cheap. But I will let you know that this Stratos is coming out by Mini GT, I think. So, chances are Mini GT, being a modern brand, will pro hopefully do a better job than CMs. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm gonna get it whenever it comes out in a racing livery. But uh, I haven't seen anything about this, so not sure. All right, well, let's let this uh, Marlboro Golf here go for a spin on its own. 
Okay, so uh, I'll be honest with you, I actually had to shoot this video twice because I didn't see those decals in that cardboard box. I'm just so used to those cardboard boxes being thrown out, I was very lucky that I opened it to find those decals. So it would be ideal if actually, you know, Tarmac and Shuko, whoever actually packaged this thing, maybe put the decals in a more obvious location. Maybe they tape it to the outside of that box. So anyways, in the end though, I think this model is pretty good. It looks like the photographs, uh, you know, minor QC issues, but uh, otherwise yeah, I think it's good. So I will continue to get some Shukos whenever they get some interesting subjects out there or Tarmac. I don't know how you want to, who's, who's first here on this. I always say Shuko because I'm pretty sure the casting itself is by Shuko. But maybe the livery rights, you know, the, the rights to do this livery are by Tamarack. I'm not sure how that relationship works. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you the next time around. Bye.